You may have heard the term happy ending before. That's also the name of the new Dutch Netflix rom-com. But is this movie actually about that? <laughs> yeah, it totally is. Luna and Mink are a symbiotic couple celebrating their one year anniversary together. Mink doesn't know that Luna has been faking it since the beginning of the relationship, and Luna has kept this quiet for so long now that she doesn't dare bring it up with him. When her best friends who know about her problem urge Luna to try new things with Mink, she proposes an exciting idea to him, a triple. But the idea has unexpected consequences. This is basically a sexed up version of a rom-com. Like I mentioned, we follow Luna and Mink, and they're a happy-go-lucky couple. But Luna is keeping one very important secret from Mink. And when they're celebrating their anniversary, Luna proposes an idea. Eventually, Mink agrees. Now, this is mostly lighthearted, but there's still the threat of a stinging conclusion that lurks throughout so much of the story. We can see Luna is growing more unsatisfied as the days and weeks go by. And Gaiti Jensen, who plays Luna, she does a good job of showcasing the discontent through her eyes and expressions. And so much so that she sometimes comes across as a very dour person. I mean, she smiles with Mink and reassures him that he did a good job, but it's all lies. And you might think that the larger message within this story is that Luna shouldn't have to sacrifice her pleasure or feelings in order to spare or pacify Minx. But that doesn't really come into play much at all. We can see how she doesn't really want to hurt him, especially because she's been faking everything for so long. But when the complications arise, that's not a major focus of the narrative. The story does effectively build out the tension, not only between the couple, but then also between Luna and Eve, the woman they meet. There's an uneasiness that comes about mostly because of secrecy. Now, I'm really glad that Eve addresses a huge shortcoming with Luna by speaking truth to her. It's a harsh and biting conversation, and it's definitely also quick and then even resolved simply, but the heartbreak and poignancy that comes from the conversation I thought was effective. Now, I call this a rom-com, but it's pretty light on the comedy. There's more romance and drama than chuckles. Now, the movie does have humorous moments, especially with some awkward or cringy interactions, but the crux of the story relies on the unspoken tension that builds and builds between our characters. Because of the context of this story, there's a lot of sex that happens. And so many times in other movies or series, the scenes, they're just devoid of feeling, playing out more like a late night cable movie. Now here, sensuality is created, and not all the time and not in every sequence, but a few times it actually gets a bit hot and steamy. So if you're planning on watching this with people other than your significant other, be aware that depending on who that is, things could get awkward. Despite the movie only being 92 minutes and it containing a lot of buildup to the threesome and the aftermath, the story does a pretty good job of not rushing the narrative along. Now, towards the end of the movie, there is a montage that plays to show passage of time, and it does exactly what it's meant to do without making it seem like it's skimping on the content or the storyline. We get the gist of what the characters are feeling and experiencing, and then the montage ends to place us in the present so the conclusion can happen. There are some side characters that help to influence both Luna and Mink's lives, and although there's not a ton of development on them, they do add a nice presence to the story and the character dynamics. Luna has two best friends, and their camaraderie, I thought, was wonderful. They joke and tease, but also demonstrate care and concern. And their interactions are heartwarming and make for some genuine feel-good moments. And Mink also has a best friend. And while that relationship looks different from Luna's, there are still some very touching moments that we witness that help to showcase the quality of Mink's character. In these small moments, the characters are humanized, transforming them from just characters within a story to relatable people that we could have in our lives. Now, throughout the movie, we get insights into the lives of Luna and Mink, but there are portions that are shown while they're also at work. Now, it felt like some of these setups were forgotten and just left by the wayside because they weren't addressed again within the movie. We watch Luna give a big pitch during the meeting, and it feels like it's either going to be pertinent to the course of the story or at least come back around at some point to complete the circle, maybe with a lesson or a surprise happening. None of that happens, though. So instead, this scene, and even though it is relatively short, it's just a waste of time and a distraction. I think the most significant issue or maybe dissatisfaction that I have with the movie is the end. Now, it's not necessarily a bad ending, but it's somewhat vague. Now, I don't always need or even want a nicely wrapped up storyline, but in a romance, I do. I want a solid conclusion that doesn't leave me wavering in what I think the outcome was. As it may not bother everybody, and it's not like the ending tanks the rest of the story. And maybe it's just too real of a conclusion, and I was hoping for something more akin to fantasy. 
Either way, how this concludes it doesn't affect how I feel about the filmmaking and the storytelling overall. It's just more of a preference on how I'd prefer the ending to come across. So overall, Happy Ending mixes sweetness with sexiness and conflict to create an engaging character study on the importance of truth and communication within a relationship. Characters are charismatic and charming, but not without faults, allowing them to feel more real than just a subject on a screen. The supporting cast helps to humanize the leads, expanding them from a couple entrenched in their own drama to become relatably satisfying and expressive individuals. And despite the short runtime, the narrative maintains a steady pace and doesn't rush the experience, allowing the audience to travel with the characters through their relationship and feel a connection to their struggles. The movie also doesn't censor the sensuality, showcasing not only the passion of the players, but also the emotional ties that go along with them. There's a ton of sex, some nudity, a lot of profanity, and no violence. I give Happy Ending three and a half out of five couches. So what are you watching this weekend? Anything you can recommend to me in the comments? I'd love to hear about it. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.